Today in Final Cut Pro, I'm going to show you an exceptionally powerful plugin that just became Apple Silicon ready for my friends over at Motion VFX who are kind enough to sponsor this video. This plugin will massively improve your production value of your videos by bringing your still images to life. That plugin being M Puppet. The first thing you will need to do before you pull off this effect is separate your image into multiple layers. There are tons of tutorials covering this online, so to keep this video short, I'm not going to cover that. But once you have your image in separated layers, go ahead and import those into Final Cut Pro. Firstly, I want my bottommost layer to be on the bottom stack, so I will select that image and push W. This will insert it down on the timeline. From there, we can go ahead and locate the next layer and push Q, which will connect it to that initial clip. Finally, we'll find the third layer and again, we will push Q. Now that we have all these layers stacked up, this is what my original photo looks like. From here, we will go on up to our titles and generators to locate M Puppet. Now normally, you might suspect that this effect is found inside of your effects panel or inside of your titles, but in the case of M Puppet, it's actually in your generators. Go ahead and click on this arrow to expand that and locate M Puppet. Once you've found M Puppet, you'll see that you have two options. You have the regular M Puppet and then you have M Puppet plus Motion Blur. M Puppet Motion Blur is definitely going to give you a better result, but it's going to cost more with computing power. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to use the regular M Puppet. I'll go ahead and click and drag M Puppet down onto the timeline, then I can push Option right bracket to trim it down to the same length as the other clips. M Puppet is ridiculously easy to use. All I need to do is select M Puppet, then go to my Generators panel. In here you'll see that I have a drop zone and I'll just click on this down arrow. From there, we can select the layer that we want to animate. After that, we'll go ahead and push apply. You'll notice now that I have double of the person jumping. One is really small and that is the M puppet version. We need to first scale this up to get its proper size. So go ahead and locate the scale slider and just drag this up until it matches the same size as the original layer. If you can't scale it enough by using this slider, then you can just click and drag directly on the numbers and that will allow you to go well beyond this scale value. However, if it's too finicky and touchy and it just zooms way too much, go ahead and push option and click and drag and that will give you a much finer adjustment. Once you get it to be the same scale as the original layer, you can select the original layer and push V, that will disable it. So now we should be left with just our M Puppet layer. When you select M Puppet, you'll notice all of your controls in the bottom left hand corner. You can also click and drag this window to wherever you need just in case it happens to get in the way of your animation. The first tool that we'll select is this control point add button. We'll go ahead and zoom in with command plus and then I'll just adjust my window so I can see exactly where I'm clicking. I'll go ahead and just click on all the points that I want to add a control point. And I highly recommend that you do this typically on joints that you'll want to animate. So we could do it on our arms and we could go down here to our legs. We'll add one for the feet and for the knees. Now that I have all of my control points, you'll see that I can just click and drag any of these points and it will warp my mesh to wherever I drag that control point. And that is the power of M Puppet. Come on over to the right side and locate this mesh A group. You can click on this down arrow which will expand it and you'll notice that the first option here is the mesh density. This is essentially the quality of the mesh that you want for your video. So a higher quality mesh is of course going to cost more computing power. Right now it is set to average. If we want to see what the mesh looks like, we can just click on this icon and that will show me my mesh. Now we can change the mesh density from average all the way up to extreme. And you'll notice that this gives me a much higher quality mesh. But again, this is going to cost more computing power. For this particular tutorial, I actually don't need much, so I'm going to set it down to sparse. We can also increase or decrease the size of the mesh. So if we wanted to, we could expand this out, and now this single control point has a larger radius that it is affecting. Let's go ahead and just leave that at 0% for right now. Underneath that, we can expand out the handles. 
The first thing you'll notice is interpolation. It's currently set to smooth. Most of the time, that's what you're gonna want. This is going to give you the smoothest animation, but you do have the option to change it over to linear. You also have this reset handles button. Now this is super convenient because if my control points are all over the place, then I need to get it back to its original size. I can go ahead and click on reset handles. It'll ask me if I want to remove the handles animation when resetting their position. So if I had any animations applied to these handles, I would have the option of maintaining that animation, but getting all the control points back to their original position. I'll go ahead and select no, that way if I had animation, it would not delete those animation points. Another really powerful feature that comes with MPuppet is the ability to adjust the depth of each individual control point. Let's say I have this hand and I want it to go behind the head. You'll notice currently that it's actually in front of the head. So what I would need to do is find this control point, which by mousing over, I can see is handle one. So we'll go on over to handle one and we'll just drag the depth back in Z space. So now that hand is now behind the head instead of in front of it. This is super, super powerful if you're doing any sort of 2D character animations or if you're just repositioning somebody for a video. I'm gonna go ahead and reset my handles once more to get it back to its original position. From there, let's come on over to the right hand side and you'll notice that I have these grayed out diamonds. Clicking on that, I can add a keyframe. Let's go ahead and add a keyframe to all of these different control points for our mesh. Now that I've added these control points, we can move to where we want the animation to end and adjust all of these control points to their final position. Now, something to keep in mind, when you're working with a human, it's important that you keep all of these animations very subtle. It's very easy for humans to catch when something looks off with the shape of a person. So just keep that in mind as you're adjusting these control points. Keep it subtle, but just add some nice motion onto your clip. So I'll just click and drag all these different control points to get it to the shape that I want. Now another super powerful tool with this is the ability to select multiple control points at once. So I'll just select this bounding box icon. Clicking on that, I can now click and drag over the control points that I want to adjust. I want to adjust all of them, so I'll just click and drag over the entire object. You'll now see that I have this white bounding box. I can mouse over the top of the box and you'll see that I can now scale this up and down vertically by dragging out this bounding box. I can also click and drag in the corners to adjust the scale all at once, or we can click on this middle icon to drag the entire mesh into position. And finally, I can go to any of the corners with my mouse just barely outside of it and click and drag to rotate the entire object. So now we can get this into its final position and it will affect all of the control points at once rather than needing to adjust them individually. So now that I have added all of the control points I could need and I've animated them, we can go ahead and preview our animation. And that is looking pretty nice to me. Now you can definitely slow this animation way down. Say you're trying to resemble that super ultra slow-mo effect. That's a very viable option. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna keep it nice and short at three seconds. Now, if you ever need to delete a control point that you're not happy with, all you need to do is select this tool with the minus and now you can click on one of these control points to delete it. So now that we've done our animation, it's time to make this shot look 3D. We'll select the bottom most layer. Make sure your playhead is at the very first frame, then go over and find your scale options. We'll click to add a keyframe, then we can move to the very last frame, and then we can set the scale percentage up to something like 120%. Next, we'll just select the next most layer. We'll click to add a keyframe at 100%, and this time, We'll set it to scale up to something like 140%. Finally, we can select the M puppet layer. We'll go to the very beginning. We'll click to add a keyframe at 100%. And this time I'm gonna scale it all the way up to 180%. So now if we play through, we should have a nice subtle parallax effect where our frontmost person is increasing in scale faster than the background. This will make it feel really three dimensional. However, I have one last secret weapon to really make this pop, and that is by adding texture. Let's go on over to our browser and locate this texture that I downloaded off the internet, and I'll go ahead and apply that on the timeline. After that, we can scroll down to the very bottom of the spatial conform and change the type from fit over to fill. 
Scrolling to the top, we can find our blend mode options and change it from normal over to something like screen. We could dial down the opacity if we wanted to, then move back to the very beginning of our animation. We'll click on our scale to add a keyframe, then we'll add one more keyframe and set this all the way up to 200%. Finally, we don't want this texture to be covering up our person, so we can go over to the effects inspector, then we can look up the shape mask tool. Applying that onto the grunge texture, we can bring the radius way down and drag it up over the top of our person. We could round it out and then click and drag to make the feather go way off to the edges. Finally, we'll find this invert mask option and go ahead and enable that so that the grunge texture is only affecting the outer edge. Now, if we go ahead and push play, we can see how this looks super 3D. So that is how you can use M Puppet to make your photos look that much more alive. But this is far from the only application that M Puppet has. You can use M Puppet to animate your 2D characters. You can use M Puppet to animate text. You can even use M Puppet for VFX shots. Say for example, you want somebody to act like they're getting hit by a car, but obviously their body can't contort in that way. Well, that is where M Puppet comes into play. If you're interested in checking out M Puppet, I do have an affiliate link down below as well as a discount code for you. It does support the channel if you use that link, so thank you so much. And if you want to check out even more Motion VFX plugins, I have a video right here showcasing five of my absolute favorites from Motion VFX. With that being said, thank you so much for watching, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.